So you want to become a better ball handler, yet your practices and trainings look like this. Stationary ball handling, crossovers between a cone, going slow, being rigid, having no fluidity, no imagination. And in this video, I will show you how to maximize your dribbling potential. In order to reach our potential as ball handlers and playmakers, we have to understand that there is more to ball handling and playmaking than what we see typically for most trainers and on um, Instagram. And so what do I mean, right? On Instagram and most trainers, and, and there's good reason, and I'll touch base on this a little bit later. Um, most trainers, we will go through and have you go through some cone work and write, you know, cross, cross, all right, get into a shot, um, go finish, right? That is what is being taught out there most of the time, which is one, which is called, all right, attacking on offense, right? Scoring from the wing, scoring from the top, whatever you want to say. Now, the other two, number one, you have to, have to, have to, this is the number one. If you want to be a point guard at a high level, you have to be able to handle pressure, right? That is called full court press when you're getting trapped, right? When you are, right, getting hounded and there's a great defender, are you able to handle full court pressure? Because if you turn the ball over a lot, your coach is not going to trust you and they're going to put someone in that can handle the rock better than you. So number one is, all right, handling full court pressure. Number two, all right, that is initiating offense. And that is different than the scoring that we typically see on Instagram or when you're working with most of your trainers, right? Initiating offense is for point guards or point forwards or whoever initiates your offense, right? Depends what your coach says. Do they have a traditional way of looking at basketball or not? That's not really the point. The point is you have to be able to call the offense. And this is a leadership standpoint as well. Can you communicate and get everyone in to the right positions, the right spots in a very short amount of time, right? Depends where you're watching this. Maybe you have a state with no shot clock and it doesn't matter how long it takes to get you in your offense because there's no rush, no hurry. However, it is important to get people in their spot so you can run, right? Whether you are a pick and roll offense, whether you are a dribble drive offense, whether you're a passing cut, right? It's all going to depend on that. Your ability to handle the rock while you're giving out instructions to your team is going to significantly impact your ability to make an impact all right on and number three as we talked about that is your cross cross trying to score trying to make plays um typically what you see in, in training and that is very important as well and so in the for the rest of this video i'm going to break down two components that you should include in all of your ball handling workouts. So let's get into it. Number one is what I call dribble strength. So dribble strength is typically what you see and there's a lot of trainers that, that poo-poo it and, and talk about how you know stationary ball handling or ball handling on air doesn't help you become a better ball handler. However, if you are using it and doing it correctly, where you are really pushing yourself out of comfort, your comfort zone, you can become a better ball handler by increasing your strength. So when you are going through this, right, making sure you're making mistakes, right? So in this, you know, I did that what is called the power 200, all right? So I did 20 pounds with my right, 20 pounds with my left, and I want to get that ball all the way up to my shoulder, so I really have to pound it, and I want that ball, I want to be losing that ball constantly. If I'm not, I'm not stretching myself. Then I have 20 V dribbles, 20 skiers, 20 in and outs, 20 crossovers, and 20 behind the back, all right, for both arms, all right, both right and left, unless it's obviously crossover behind the back. You can also, in addition, add between the legs. And there are more. There are so many different stationary ball handling drills you can do. It's endless. You can look at Google, right? The main point is you should include strength ball handling into your workouts every single day, right? If you want to be a better ball handler you, you, and you're committed to that, you have to be handling the rock at least five to ten minutes every single day doing strength ball handling. Of course, hitting the weight room is going to help, right? Whether you are a freshman or a senior in high school, right? You have to hit the weight room. If you're going to become a stronger ball handler, it's going to help if you get stronger in the weight room.
next we got creativity and this is where you want to continue to expand and you don't only want to do right stationary ball handling because stationary ball handling like many people say is limiting to a point right uh you know after you work on your handle strength you then take your handle strength and you're getting creative into it so here i'm kind of breaking it down it's actually even beneficial to go full court right and imagine yourself right handling the rock right so am i going here am i going there right what do i mean right so i'm just going through i'm imagining i, I have the ball and i'm kind of working on my footwork imagining there's a defender in front of me boom dribble dribble cross cross right and so i'm working on my footwork without the basketball because footwork is actually very important when it comes to ball handling and so when we're getting creative with it right we're going to go full court just like we were handling our full court pressure earlier and in addition we're going to go now we're going to get into our shots right now we're going to get into our finishes and if you have a partner right i can go cross cross drive kick however you all want to kind of run that and so that's a great way right so if i'm stacking it and, and i got 30 minutes this is what i would do right and i want to i want to work on my ball handling i would go five to ten minutes right stationary ball handling and then i'm going five to ten minutes all right i'm going to go getting creative with it into a, sh a pull up jumper and then I'm going five to 10 minutes finishes or vice versa, right? I can work a little bit full court. I can go, I can use my imagination. Then I pick up a ball, I go full court, then I score a layup, right? Just really the more creative you can get with your ball handling, because if you're always doing cone dribbling. If you're always doing stationary, that's not going to help. However, right, we have to use stationary to develop our strength, right? Really like pounding that basketball, making a hole in the ground. And then we're getting creative with it and, you have to be in order to be a fluid ball handler like Kyrie, like you know, drop the com drop someone in the comments. You know that's that's a great ball handler. Um, you know you just have to be fluid, right? You can't be rigid. You can't always go against the cone. You have to, your body has to be able to solve different problems, right? So if my body is you know understanding a problem when someone reaches right maybe it's a wrap around and that's where that imagination really helps so if this video if you got something out of this i want you to commit to being a better ball handler by saying i'm gonna i'm gonna do five to ten minutes of ball handling every single day that's the only way you're really going to step up right some people have natural abilities but if you really want to get out of that comfort zone you have to get one percent better every single day and you have to subscribe to btg basketball beyond the game we're going to help you become a better leader and a better basketball player maximize your potential as a underestimated hooper coach Furtado out